Okay, so all the lights are still on, just so we can show you what you need to get yourself set up, talking about your enlarger, talking about your negative slides, grades of um, contrast that you might be adding to your picture, and obviously our chemicals which we need to get that picture showing on the paper. Damn. This here is my workstation that I use while I'm in college. Um, basically, it's good to just have one enlarger that you use all the time just to make your printing processes easier. So if you are at university, at college or at school um, and you do have a darkroom facility available, it's just good practice to use the same enlarger every time if it's possible to just to make your life easier and your, the quality of your prints better. So let's just get into it straight away. I'm just going to talk you through the station that we have here. Um, the basic minimum equipment that you'll need to start printing your film. Basically, what we have here is our enlarger. So our enlarger is a Durst enlarger. This model here is the M670 VC. Um, the beauty of this enlarger is that I do not have to add or remove any contrast filters in this enlarger. So if I want to add any contrast to my image, normally what I would do is have a tray here, which I would then put a filter inside just to add more contrast to my image. So make my blacks blacker, make my whites a little bit whiter, little bits like that. But with this, it has a dial on the top and we can just dial in all different levels of contrast which we need while we're exposing our paper. Um, other features on here, it's got a winding mechanism just on the side. Unfortunately, it's a little bit out of the um, view of the camera, but you could raise and lower it just so you have a different image size on the bottom. Also, on each side here and here, these are the focusing knobs. So when I move these, I'm going to do it on this side, just watch this part here. This will then contract up and down to focus the image that is being projected through the enlarger. And your image is projected through your negative tray. So your negative tray is inside there. You'll have light which comes through and shines down. It'll shine through the negative in this tray. And then it'll project your image on the bottom plate here. And you'll have either your easel or you will just have the base of your enlarger if you're looking to do um, a, a print all across the whole page that you, you have. If you're not looking to print the whole page, then on the easel here, you can then create a border for that image so you've got a nice crisp line around. So you can use this, you can line everything up and then you can have everything in place perfectly. Um, last but not least, actually there's two more things, sorry. Um, this one here, this is your loop. So when you're projecting your image down, um, you will have your loop. It's got a little mirror just along here. It will go underneath the light. You'll look through the eyepiece and then you'll then use your focusing knob on the side to get your focus nice and sharp on your image. Once you're happy with your sharpness, then you can then add your paper and expose your image ready to develop. Um, the way that you'll expose that is by using your timer. So I'm just lift that there. This is, for anyone that's interested, the GravLab 450 timer, which is attached to this enlarger. And the good thing about this one here is that you can time your exposure in one second increments, 10 second increments, and even one tenth of a second increments as well. So if you wanted to do an exposure for 2.7 seconds, then you're perfectly able to do that just to get that perfect dialed in exposure that you may need to make micro adjustments to. Um, basically, you've got two knobs there which can set the first number and second number of your seconds or possibly minutes. Um, and then you've got your start reset button there. Um, I'm not sure how much you can see it there, but it's dialed into 15 seconds at the moment. And then once you click it, it'll come down. 
and then it will count down all the way down to zero. And what I'm going to quickly do there, just put it on a five second exposure and also show you that it can be set to a tone. And then once it's done, it will give you a beep to indicate that it's done. Also, there is a second tone, which is more like a countdown tone. So we're on five seconds still. Once it stopped beeping, you know that the exposure is over. So if by any chance you are away from your workstation and you have got it on a timer, then you know if you're on the other side of the room that you can head back to your workstation and collect your paper. Right, now that we have all of our basic equipment needed to create our print, let's talk about the chemicals that we will be developing our print in. Okay, so that was our workstation, our enlarger and the equipment we needed. So now, as I said, we're going to talk about our chemicals that we're going to use um, to develop that paper we've just exposed our image onto. So here at Wolverhampton College, you've got a, a lovely workstation set out. Um, it is mirrored on the other side, so you can have multiple people working all at once. Um, here we have trays, which have got our chemicals inside already, but I will still talk you through what we'll do to create the tray of the chemical at the correct ratio so that we don't um, use too much and ruin the image that we're trying to use. So we go straight into the developer. So once we've actually taken our paper and we place it into the developer, what we use here is Ilford Multigrade. Um, this one is our red label. So this is how we know this is our developer if we just look by the colour. Um, with your developer, it's quite a very strong um, chemical, so this has a long lifespan inside of it. And you will have to change it eventually, but you'll notice when your developing just starts to not work correctly. But just for now, for your developer, when you are creating your workstations and setting them up, you will have to use 100 millilitres of the concentrate to 900 millilitres of water and then that is enough to fill a one litre tray um, that is enough for a, a full size A4 image to fit inside the tray um, once you've got your developer set you can then move on to your stop chemical and this is the photo speed stop bath um, with photo speed, the colour of the photo speed liquid is yellow and it's got like a yellowy colour to it. Um, when you need to change this, you'll actually notice that the, the yellow colour in the um, stop bath turns purple. So you'll know that's when you need to change your stop chemical. And with this one, you're using anywhere from 25 to 50 millilitres and then however much you use there, you'll then top the rest up with water to equal 1,000 ml. And then what that will be in essentials will be 25 millilitres of your stock chemical, and then you'll be using um, 975 millilitres of water. That will be enough to then fill your stock bath, just the same as one litre's worth. Once you've got your stock chemical ready, you then move on to your fix. And your fix here is the Ilford Pipam, and this is the green label. So because we have two Ilford chemicals, it's good that the labels are actually different colours. Um, your Pipam here, uh, this is a 250 millilitre mixture of this to 750 millilitres of water. And that will then give you enough to fill a one litre tray again. Once you've got your three chemicals set, in your final bath here, um, as you can see, it's completely separate. This is just um, cold water. We have a tap here and we have a pipe that runs through that will shoot water through continuously into the bath. So you've got fresh water continuously coming through. Um, it's got a raised um, plug hole in there. So there's enough water to keep washing through the 
paper just to give it um, the, the, the last wash before you dry it and have your developed image. So that will be here. Okay, so what do each one of these do? Very plainly simply, your developer is going to develop the image that you've just exposed. So once you've placed your paper inside, you would then agitate, I'm just going to move this out of the way, you will then agitate your tray backwards and forwards in a nice gentle motion. Hopefully you can see as I'm doing this, I'm just lifting up and down. And what you want to do is just move that developer liquid across forwards and backwards over the paper and then it will start to agitate the chemicals on the paper as well. Then they'll have that chemical reaction together and you'll start seeing the image develop on the paper. Once it's been in the developer for roughly a minute to four minutes maximum and you then bring it over to your stop bath. I'm going to move this out of the way now. Once it's in your stop bath, you want to put it in there 30 seconds, give it a slight agitation as well, just so it's moving across, stopping the developer from developing the image even more. So if you wanted to develop it by eye, and so finally you place it all in from the fix to the wash, basically we're just washing away that residue of the other three chemicals that we've used prior, and when it it's clearing that paper of any other chemicals. Once that's done, um, you can leave that in there for uh, using a resin coated paper. So you can leave that in there for a maximum of five minutes um, and then you can take it out and you can dry it. And now you should have an exposed image. Damn.